Pat Farbaugh with St. Francis head coach Chris Valerio, his team, two and three going into the conference season. It's all NEC games the rest of the way, coming up a 52 to 10 win over Malone last week. Uh, the team is at Robert Morris on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. That game will be televised live on ESPN3. Chris, you have five in uh, the conference schedules behind you. Could you quickly uh, assess uh, your take on the team's performance through those non-conference games, given that we're entering conference play Saturday? You know, it's something I told the team about uh, after the game, uh, Malone game. You know, we talked about we're going to build on the positives. We're going to build on all the positive we had. Um, you know, I thought we grew up a lot. Um, unfortunately, we came up short in, in, in three, of, three of them games. But um, getting back to, you know, this past week's game, you know, one thing I think we learned from the previous other games that we lost is how to finish. We need to keep, you know, stay in the game. It's a 60-minute uh, fight, and uh, we got to finish it. And um, I just addressed the team yesterday. You know, I'm not going to talk about the first half, but I was very proud of the way we came out, um, presented ourselves in the second half, and finished the game. First game for St. Francis in the Northeast Conference. Few of the teams have played conference games. Do you think this is the best the NEC has been, top to bottom, since you've been here? And I ask you that. Uh, Sacred Heart, they were 4-0, they had beaten Stony Brook at Stony Brook, a CAA mm -hmm. program, and then Wagner goes and pounds uh, Sacred Heart uh, in their conference opener on Saturday. Our scores playing with three teams ranked in the top 25. Uh, is this the best the league has been since you've been here, in your opinion? Uh, it is. Uh, anything can happen any given week. So it, it's become a playoff environment every week, and it, records aside, um, these things are they all become rivalry games, and uh, it, it's exciting. Uh, it's also nerve-wracking, but it's exciting to see the competition. It's exciting to see the level uh, of play in the NEC, and uh, you know this one's this one's huge. This is a rivalry. You know this one has a lot of emotion in it. It's going to be hard hitting, and um, it, you know it's their homecoming, so uh, it's, it's going to be. A, a, an environment that's going to be full of energy and uh, hopefully we're ready for the challenge. Are you at all concerned it is the first conference game, it is a rivalry game, and a lot of these players know each other. You recruit heavily from the Whippeal, as does uh, Banazak, Jay Banazak, the head coach of the Colonials. Uh, a lot of the guys know one another. Are you at all concerned your guys might come out too amped up against RMU in the first half? Well, hopefully we learn uh, through our experiences that you know, we got to stay level-headed through the whole game. And uh, it's not just one quarter, two quarter, three quarter. It's a four-quarter game. It's 60 minutes. And there's going to be adversity. There's going to be adverse situations in games, and you got to be able to fight through it. So hopefully we've learned that uh, through uh, playing these, these you know, top uh, 20 teams, and, and we're going to learn how to battle through it, and uh, we're going to be smarter for it. Stevie, good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. Pat Farwell with junior defensive back Malik Duncan. Malik, first off, congratulations on the win over Malone in the final conference game. Thank you. Thank you. You lead the team in pass breakups with seven, third on the team in tackles uh, with 28. And you had your first sack of the season uh, against Malone in which uh, Iannucci, their quarterback, was, was down uh, seemingly as soon as the ball was snapped. Can you walk us through what happened on that play from your perspective? Uh, yeah. So... Coach McCorey called the play. I looked over to the sideline, and I was like, when I seen that he was calling me for blitz, I was very hyped, I should say. And um, I read, read the cadence, seen, and then it opened up, made the sack, and I was pretty happy. I was very happy. And it was your say. first sack of the season, first sack in an SFU uniform? First sack in my career ever in football, so I was very happy about it. <laughs> Well, uh, the team uh, closed out the non-conference schedule in a big way with a 42-point win uh, over the Pioneers. Uh, you're a junior. You're one of the team's leaders on the defensive side. Yes, uh, Malone also played Robert Morris, and that was only a two-point victory for the Colonials uh, two weeks ago. Are you at all concerned, or have you looked at it as your responsibility to make sure this team understands that we can't look at comparative scores? Uh, this is a new season going into RMU oh, Saturday. Yes, sir. RMU is a great team. They're going to bring it. NEC players every week, anything can happen. So I know RMU is going to bring it. It's going to be a tough game because it's NEC. They're hyped up. We're hyped up, so it's going to be a competitive game from the jump. As a team... Uh, the non-conference uh, part of the schedule uh, was a tough one. Uh, now we go in to NEC action. Uh, again, you look forward each week.
You are number one. Yes, sir. Uh, is there a story we were talking a little bit before uh, this interview? Is there any backstory to why you wear that uniform number on the field? Um, it was it was a change for me. I thought change had been good, but my biggest inspiration, like people who motivated me in my life, some people who motivated me in my life was Omar Winston, who played here a couple years ago, and Kahari Dixon. They always stay on me from the jump and stay on my back and stay on my neck. Even when they're not around, they always text me, make sure I'm good. And Kahari in high school, when I had tough times and I wasn't that good of a player, I should say, he always encouraged me to make sure I was doing the right thing and always stayed on my back when I was uh, in high school. So. Well, well hopefully Kahari's uh, checked this video out. I hope he does, man. <laughs> I love that dude. Hey, Malik, good luck. Thank you. Against RMU Saturday. Thank you. Pat Farball with sophomore wide receiver Cam Lewis. Cam from Fresno, California. Had a huge game uh, against Malone. Ten catches, 188 yards, a two-yard touchdown. Uh, on a, a pass that was fired into the end zone by Zach Dre. Became the first player with 10 catches in a game at St. Francis since a player uh, that Malik just mentioned, Omar Winston, in 2008 against Central Connecticut State First Camp. Congratulations on this outstanding performance Thank against you. Malone. It seems, uh, going back to that Malone game, it seems that your chemistry with Zach Dreyer, the senior quarterback, is only increasing week to week. He seems comfortable throwing into all sorts of different looks, uh, looking uh, for you, number 11, on the field. Do you feel like the chemistry with him has grown from week to week? Um, we work on it every day at practice. It's good to have a good chemistry with your quarterback. Um, I believe if he, if he knows where I'm going to be out on the field and could put the ball in a specific place and trust him to be there, that works wonders for us. Uh, it's been working week to week, so we just keep continue to work on it at practice, and we're getting, getting better and creating better chemistry. Balance on offense, it was there uh, on Saturday. 259 yards passing against the Pioneers, 232 yards rushing. So really uh, almost a 50-50 split between rush yards and pass yards. Does that help uh, the passing game when uh, a guy like Jaimir Jordan Tony uh, piles up the yardage he did? He had four touchdowns, well over 100 yards. Uh, does it, it, the defense has to stay honest, respecting both the run and the pass. Does it make your job easier? I mean, it makes the, just the team in general better. It helps us, uh, the passing and the ru rushing game out. If we can run the ball, then they have to put more people in the box, and that gives me a, more opportunities for one-on-one -on -one chances. And then if Dre feels comfortable, he'll throw the ball. If we pass the ball, then that opens up the box more for the running back. So it just helps the team out in general. Now, I've never met a receiver that uh, doesn't mind the ball-catching responsibilities. Everybody loves that. Uh, on the run plays, uh, you have blocking assignments that you have to fulfill. Do you enjoy that responsibility uh, for you uh, when the run game is working? Of course. It's never just about me getting the ball. I've got to make sure the running backs are scoring. Because if I'm scoring and we're not winning, then it doesn't mean anything. But i still got to do my job and block for the running backs. We're a part of a team, and we're trying to finish as a team. So, of course, I love blocking for my running backs. Would you describe uh, your assessment uh, as a blocker? Give yourself a grade on the blocking um, part of things? Oh, there's always room for improvement. I can get better. So, if I had to give myself a grade, it would be a B because there's always room for improvement. I'm never the best at, at anything yet. Well, keep up the good work on uh, at the receiver spot uh, at RMU uh, Saturday, Cam. Thanks for Thank talking you. with us. Good luck Saturday. Appreciate it.